What's up guys, Shane here. And today I'm gonna to show you the three problems I found with my Chevy Silverado. Now, none of these are structural problems. It's just really design flaws, but they are super annoying. And it's gonna be a lot of problems you're gonna see if you own one of these trucks or if you're gonna buy one. And this is why GM really needs to fix these in 2023. So with that said, let's get in the garage because it's freezing out here. I'm gonna shut this door because it's a little bit windy. And let's get right into number one. All right. So now the first thing you're going to notice all of these issues from the driver's seat, which makes this a big deal for me. And that's why Chevy or GM really needs to fix this because if I'm in the driver's seat and I can tell all these design flaws, it really changes your experience of owning the truck. All right. So the first issue you're going to run into, you're going to notice this about the second day you own this truck, you're going to go in here and you're going to adjust your sound settings. What you're going to do is you're going to click on sound and your radio and then your bass, mid range and treble. All of these are going to be at zero. So now you're going to go in here and adjust this to how you like it. You know, I think the best is like 10 minus two, six. That's about the best settings and like two notches fade to the back. That sounds the best for these trucks. So then the second day after you turn the truck off and start it the next day, you're going to realize all those settings are gone. This truck will not hold the settings for your sound. Now they say there's a fix for this issue. And what you got to do is you actually have to do a factory reset on your radio, which doesn't make any sense to me because if it won't hold the settings from the factory, why will a factory reset? fix the issue that should just change it right back to how it is but they say that's normally what fixes it i haven't done it yet might do a separate video on that later but that is a super annoying thing for this truck that every time you get in here you have to adjust the sound all right so now the most annoying feature in this truck is going to be the automatic start stop here anytime the vehicle senses it stops at a stoplight or a stop sign it's going to cut the truck off so what happens is when you let off the pedal it'll actually start the truck back up and allow you to start going the problem is it's not a smooth transition when you let out the pedal, a lot of times you're trying to push on the gas so the truck will almost lurch forward and it really hinders your ability to have smooth takeoffs from stop signs. So the main problem is not that it's on the truck, it's the fact that this button resets every time you start the truck. So when you turn the truck on, you always have to turn this off or remember to turn this off for this feature to go away. If Chevy was smart, and hopefully maybe in 2023, somebody will get the idea of this button, like if you cut it off, let it stay off until I cut it back on. You know, your park assist and stability tracks and all that stuff is off when you cut it off. Why will this not stay off? That seems like a very overlooked design flaw where if it's going to give me a button to cut it off, let me cut it off. And that, that's my rant for that one. All right. Now for the last one here, we're going to have to get out of the truck. So I'm going to take you around to the front fender and show you what you're going to see for your third major problem here. Oh, hey there. If you're finding any of this useful today or if it's helping you out, make sure you hit the subscribe button for me so that way you see future videos and future content when it comes to this truck and the 4Runner. There's a lot more to come. Thanks, guys. All right, so the next thing you're going to run into is you're going to be driving down the road and you're going to hear a whistling noise. Now, it's going to sound like it's coming from this vent or this door jam, and this could be driver's side or passenger side. They both will do the same thing. And what it is, you'll actually hear a very loud whistling noise. For me, it was around 45 miles per hour. I've seen a lot of the forms. The guys say it happens with a crosswind. Inside this fender, there's actually a piece of foam. And I'll, I'll try to give you a good angle here and show you the foam in there. But that piece of foam is almost held in by 3M tape. And it'll actually turn sideways a little bit and allow a little bit of airflow to come through the actual fender itself. And what you're hearing is the air exiting the door jam. So the noise you're actually going to be hearing is the air actually coming out of this door jam and it makes it just whine and whistle going down the road. The design of this truck, the air will actually come in through the fender and there's a void space here. And that piece of foam is about right here, which is supposed to stop the air from making that noise exiting. But that piece of foam can very easily turn sideways just a small amount to let air by. And that's what allows that whistling noise to show up there. Now this is a crucial design flaw when it comes to GM and their engineers should have known this was going to make noise. A little piece of foam is not a stop for this. You almost need like a plate or something there to stop that airflow. And now actually after investigating this a little bit further, there's nothing holding that piece of foam in. It's almost just wedged in there. And it's not really foam. It's like that foam board type stuff. It's almost like a mesh board. So it's not like a hard plastic foam. It's meshy foamy type material. It's kind of hard to describe, but you saw in the video what it looks like. I tried to get it at an angle. So what you have to do to fix this is you have to go in through that crack and try to straighten it back out. And where I got the 3M tape from was I've actually heard of people using double-sided 3M tape to actually stick it in place so that way you don't get that noise come back in the future. None of this is going to stop me from buying another one of these trucks if something happened to this one. I'm definitely a Chevy guy. I've been driving them for about 10 years now, 12 years now. So none of this will stop me from buying this truck. So don't let any of this scare you away from this truck. It's still a great truck. This is just the things I've noticed in the first 5,000 miles of actually owning it. And 
they're annoying, yes, but it's not stuff that would stop me, like I said, because they can be fixed very easily where you don't have to deal with them anymore. But now with that said, since we've crossed that 5,000 mile mark and I've had my first oil change, it's time we start upgrading some stuff. And I think past due time for a leveling kit. With that, if there's anything that you guys have done to your truck you want me to do or I should do, you know, give me some input here, leave them in the comments below. So now once I get that leveling kit on, that's gonna be my first thing. I don't wanna really do a lift kit. I'm gonna show you a video of an actual this truck level versus the same truck lifted. It's gonna be a side-by-side -side comparison. A lot of people wanna see that because you don't really know if you wanna lift it or level it. I do a lot of traveling and I do a lot of driving long distance. I don't really need a lifted truck because I like the gas mileage. Leveled is about all I need. All right, that's gonna be a wrap for today's video. That's the three major problems with the Chevy Silverado. I don't know if this goes into this GMC Sierra. The body's a little bit different, but I imagine a lot of it's the same. So if you would give me a thumbs up here as I try to make a splash in the automotive side of YouTube here, it's time I pivot my channel and start doing new things. So with all that said, I hope to see y'all in the next video. This is Shane Heath. See you later.